Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name's Camel, and welcome back to Fallout 4, but most importantly, welcome to the first video in the Fallout Detective series. If you are familiar with my Elder Scrolls Detective series, it's exactly like that, but of course in the Fallout universe. So the Fallout Detective series will be an ongoing one, and one in which we investigate, curate, speculate, hypothesize, theorize, and quite often simply highlight and discuss cool, interesting, and hidden things that can be found within the Fallout games. Now today's investigation has a very simple concept, uncover and expose all of the naughty gnomes that can be found around the island in the Far Harbor DLC of Fallout 4. I'm sure you've all run into a few of them, but there are many more hidden away, more than I could have ever imagined. And while garden gnomes in Fallout games are a standard, the gnomes found in Far Harbor have a tendency to be up to no good, ranging from cheeky to genocidal. And just before we get started, if you do think that any of these gnome scenarios are actually easter eggs in reference to something please let me know because a lot of them have very specific items involved very specific scenarios and to me seem like they must be a reference to something but of course i can't figure out what so if you know that any of these are a reference to something be sure to let me know and with that said Let's get into the gnomes. So to begin our investigative journey, we must make our way to the island located off of Maine. An island shrouded in mystery, dense with demented echoes and shadows forming figments of our fear into spectres wading through a sickly fog, twisting a cogent mind into one which wanders viciously through the venomed veil that is the wondrous wilderness of the island, with a saga of tales to be told, with stores of stories and secrets buried under an ungodly mystique that is the very air we breathe, yet the very air that corrupts all it enshrouds. Far Harbor has much to offer, but for today we'll just be inspecting the naughty gnomes of the island, most of which are reflective of their twisted surroundings. And to begin this investigation, we'll make our way to the Fringe Cove docks, where the first four gnomes can be found, two of which are in this shot now. But let's make our way to these shipping containers, where we'll run into Dr. Keemstar. Inside the yellow shipping container, on the top of the pile, we can find a garden gnome wearing sunglasses and holding a stim pack, standing on a first aid kit. Next to him is also a drip rack, and the combination of his sunglasses and his cigar, this is one badass Dr. Gnome. And while there aren't really any signs that he's killed someone, there is a skeleton on the ground right in front of him, which is already beginning to bring up those suspicions that this guy is up to no good. Next, down on the docks near the water, there is a concrete pylon coming out of the water with a crane on top of it, and at the base of that crane is the second gnome we can find at Fringe Cove Docks. He is also standing here with a stim pack. He's not holding it though, it's on the ground. What he's doing with this, I don't know. He just seems to be looking out at the ocean. And before we leave the cranes of Fringe Cove docks, can you see the next gnome? Yes, up here, atop the crane, there is a second gnome, a destroyed gnome. He isn't holding anything, it's just the gnome gone solo, although he's in a very strange position, so much so that I don't think a human would have put it here. What's this guy up to? I don't know, he seems to be looking out at the ocean like the prior gnome just waiting for victims. Fourthly and finally, at Fringe Cove docks, over against the main wooden boat shed, there is a car crashed up against the wall. Driving this car is someone who probably doesn't have a license, another gnome. I couldn't find any human casualties around, so it doesn't look like this gnome has killed anyone, he's just driven a car into the side of a building. Now in Far Harbor, I'm sure you've seen this. The flaming boats, there's a bunch of crashed boats, tipped over shipping containers, and a whole lot of water that has an oil spill on top of it that's on fire. Well, if we head a little bit south of this, to a little tiny island that is found to the south of Harbour Grand Hotel, we will find a shipwrecked sailing ship, a shipwrecked tugboat, a flipped over speedboat, and just a little rocky island with some flames around it. But, if we go a little bit closer, standing next to a yellow crate, we will find two garden gnomes. Looking like, of course, they're up to no 
good at all. Upon a closer inspection, we will discover that they're actually holding Molotov cocktails. So it's quite evident that these two gnomes have thrown Molotov cocktails into the oil spill on the water, setting it on fire. These guys are responsible for the whole flaming mess on the water's edge here. Just as I suspected, they're up to gnome good. Now if we head just to the north of these two naughty gnomes, we will find a very small fishing boat. Standing on this fishing boat, fishing are two more gnomes. As we can see, they've thrown the net out, they've caught some fish. Just two gnomes having a good old day out. If we have a look at the scene a little bit closer, in the bucket in the boat, it isn't full of fish at all, it's full of human bones. One of these gnomes has even gone full swag with the sunnies. And if we look into the water, it gets darker. While there are some fish caught in the net, there is also a human skeleton entangled within the net. So these two gnomes weren't just fishing for fish, they were fishing for humans and they were successful as we can find at least three skulls in the boat and the skeleton caught in the net. Something like this is just net level. Now what we'll want to do is freshen up. Get something nice and refreshing down our gullets. To the Vim Pop Factory for a nice refreshing beverage. Well. It's not going to be that refreshing, to be honest. If we make our way to the rooftop, which is very hard to get to, but once we do get up here, we won't be greeted with a lovely view. We'll be greeted with something quite dark and esoteric. Three blue garden gnomes standing, looking up to this one red garden gnome, as if he is their leader, their cult leader, or even occult leader. This seems to be some kind of shrine, some kind of sacrificial ritual. There are, of course, human bones everywhere, sacks of human remains, blood, gore. This guy's standing on a box surrounded by lit candles with his followers looking upon him. His gathering of acolytes. There's some oil, there's a silver stopwatch, a suitcase, a cushion, some glue, some oil, some books, many, many items, too many to put together to come to a conclusion as to what the hell's actually happening here. So I'm just gonna leave them to it and hope they don't come for me next. Now to the south of the town of Far Harbor, there's a small island with a ruined house on it. We of course want to head here. And just a little bit off the shore of this small island, there is a small sailing ship next to a red boy. And look who's next to the rudder. A naughty little gnome. Well, sailing a ship isn't too bad, but if we look closer, he's not actually sailing a ship at all. He's holding machete, which he has swiftly thrown down, chopping the head off this dude trying to get into the boat. As we can see, he's uh, trying to crawl over the edge of the boat there, and his skull is lying on the floor of the boat. He's had his head cut clean off by this gnome. What a little savage. Well, bon voyage, monsieur gnome. Now what we'll want to do is head to the nucleus, the, the headquarters, the base of the Children of Atom. Once here, head inside to the nucleus headquarters. In here we can find a bedroom with some bunks in it. Of course, where pre-war soldiers slept, but something that would not help them sleep at all is this garden gnome standing on top of the lockers next to an ammunition box. Not only is he standing there, but he's also standing staring at the bunk beds where the soldiers would have been sleeping. Not something you would want. And it may have helped the soldiers sleep, but in the permanent way, if you know what I'm saying. This naughty gnome is up to no good. Next, we'll be heading to Echo Lake Lumber, where we will find two more naughty gnomes. First up, there seems to be some kind of fair on, and there are these little gaming booths or sheds where all the little girls and boys can win prizes by playing fictitious games. Here we have the Toss Challenge, where you throw a ball to knock over some milk bottles that usually glue together, making it impossible. Therefore, you never win. But if you do manage to knock the milk bottles over, you can win one of these prizes. A teddy bear, a toy boat, or a burnt plastic murderer. I mean, no. I wonder how many of the naughty gnomes around Far Harbor were spread across the island by this stall. Giving away gnomes to kids to take home, only to then get up to no good while the children sleep. It sounds pretty sus, and I mean it is. These gnomes are dirty, dirty creatures. And to the next gnome of Echo Lake Lumber, 
Over near the shed, we can find a big stack of logs and a yellow, I suppose, forklift machine. A log lift? I'm not too sure what you call this thing. But driving it, there is, you won't believe it. There's a gnome. And to be fair, I'll give it to him, this guy seems to not be up to any trouble whatsoever. He's driving an excavator or a forklift and lifting logs into a sawmill. Seems legit, so we'll just leave him to it. And I mean, although he's not up to anything naughty, we should still definitely log it. Ah yes, one of the more twisted tales. This can be found just to the north of the MS Azalea, here at the base of a cliff on the shores of Far Harbor. If you look closely, you can find a crumpled up wheelchair and a skeleton that seems to have fallen out of it. Up on the rocks, just above the wheelchair, we can find an array of interesting items. We have a book, we have stacks of pre-war money, a trilby hat, some bubble gum, but most importantly, we have four separate parts of a shattered skull. The skull, of course, is belonging to the skeleton next to the wheelchair as he doesn't have a skull. But what the hell happened here? Well, if we pan our way up to the top of the cliff, there is nothing other than a naughty gnome standing there looking down upon the mayhem that he has inflicted on this person. Twisted little piece of plastic or ceramic or porcelain or whatever he's made out of. Twist it. It would appear that this gnome has pushed this person off the cliff in the wheelchair and they've then shattered their skull and died, of course, losing all of their valuable items, which to me seem almost too specific to not be an easter egg to something. So I don't know what happened there, but with that cliffhanger, let's move on to the next one, which can be found at the very location, the MS Azalea, the shipwrecked huge cargo carrier. Now covered in dirty, dirty trappers. Anyway, up on one of the steel rebar beams that's sticking out from the ship where it's been split in half, there's something kind of weird. There's a gnome standing on a brick with some cans, a little letter block and some alcohol bottles. These gnomes are gnome to be alcoholics. And he doesn't actually seem to be up to any mischief, he's just standing here being suspicious. So let's leave him to just that. Next we'll be heading to the Harbour Grand Hotel. And while the exterior is absolutely stunning, we want to head inside. And in here, in one of the rooms, there's a bathroom and in that bathroom, well, there's this. There's a naughty gnome taking a big old dump. As we can see, he's perched on the toilet bowl, he's reading the newspaper, which of course means he's taken a number two. Not only that, but on the sink, we can see that there is a, a roll of toothpaste. So he was probably brushing his teeth, but this is of course confirmed by the fact that the gnome is also holding a toothbrush. And we can only pray that he was brushing his teeth and not something else. And sweeping our way through the gnome list, we're gonna make our way to this little blue house, which is just to the northeast of Haddock Cove. Out the front in the garden, we can find three flamingos, but we can also find one garden gnome. And no, this is not a naughty gnome. This guy just seems to be a normal garden gnome, not doing anything evil. Just hanging out with his fellow garden ornaments, the flamingos. So let's leave them to it. And if we make our way just to the southwest to Haddock Grove, the actual location, we can find our next gnome. And this one is naughty. At the top of one of the already built shambly towers, we can find a bunch of interesting things. An umbrella, a box, a duffel bag, a tree with a rad stag hanging off it that's been gutted and had its throats slit. There's a box with a gnome on top of it, a lantern, a chair, and a rifle on that chair. Now if we take a look at the gnome, we can see he's actually holding a combat knife and on the tree next to him, we can find 11 X's marked into the tree as if he's making a tally of all of the some things that he's killed. Again, on the chair next to him, there is a rifle with a scope on it. Of course, pointing towards that he's been using it to hunt things. I'm gonna say people, that he's been using it to hunt something. I'm gonna assume people because most of these naughty gnomes are destroying humans. Although there are no skeletal remains or bodies that imply that he's killed anything, only this weird setup and this uh, dead rad stag here that's had its stomach 
cut open and its intestines are hanging out. So he seemed to have some kind of lone ranger naughty gnome who's standing his guard at the top of his tower with his combat knife and his rifle and his tally. Well, you know what they say, go hard or go gnome. Next, we're gonna go to the North Wood Ridge Quarry. Here we can find some trappers that have set up a little base. And what we wanna do is head to the main building, the big main building building that they have set up here and go up onto the roof of that building. Up here in a corner next to a wooden crate, we can find the next naughty gnome. Again, he doesn't seem to be up to any mischievous acts, so I suppose he's just a normal gnome. He is, however, smoking a lit cigar, and next to him there's also a vault tech lunchbox with the word Becky written on it three times. I don't know if that's standard, but it's something I've never noticed before. So this gnome seems to have been active recently as his cigar is lit. Very weird, perhaps he's plotting an attack on these trappers. I hope so. But let's leave him to it, and on to the next gnome. <laughs> oh, did I? I say next gnome, I meant next trio of gnomes. These guys can be found to the northeast of Brook's Head Lighthouse. The three of them can be found standing amongst the flowers in the garden outside this normal house here. Again, there's three of them, they're just being standard garden gnomes standing amongst the plants. So there's nothing special to see here, just three gnomes doing their job. Ugh, this next gnome's absolute trash. Can be found outside this house on Huntress Island, right next to the bin where it belongs. If you saw my video on Twitter about this, you'll know why I hate this gnome. Anyway, he's actually not up to anything bad. He's just standing next to a bin outside the house in the garden as garden gnomes should. Bon voyage trash gnome. Ah yes, this guy can be found on the eastern wing of Huntress Island near the burning ships we were at earlier. He can be found at the water's edge underneath an umbrella standing on a lovely summer's day chair. Taking in the scenes, the lovely fresh nuclear air and just overall chilling. Not up to anything bad, although he should put some sunscreen on as he wouldn't want to get a Mela Noma, am I right? Anyway, moving on to the next one. Now, this one can also be found on Huntress Island on the northwestern end. It's standing outside this house next to a paint bucket and a lawnmower. And like his fellow Huntress Island friends, he's not up to anything bad. He's just being a garden gnome. At least that's what we think. He's probably plotting the destruction of all humankind, but uh, hey, hasn't done anything yet. So we'll leave him to it. Now, this next one took me about an hour to find, and it can be found found just to the south of the Eden Meadows Cinema. Now down here in the water there's a pile of seaweed with two bottles on top and a fish. And over next to the reeds there's some fish, a chessboard, a pot, a bottle, some random bits and bobs. Now in between these two piles in the water is the next gnome. The drowned gnome. And although there's no evidence he's done anything bad, I like this guy because it's kind of like revenge. It's good to see a dead gnome. <laughs> he's just laying here half buried on the bottom of this pond. I think it's safe to say that he's going absolutely gnomeware, just like my jokes. Now we'll be heading to this little house and dock that can be found to the west of the Harbour Grand Hotel. It actually looks like a pretty nice place from afar. But once we get a bit closer, we'll actually find a dead dude. He seems to be on the edge of the dock with his arm kind of reaching underneath. And as we can see in his hand, he's holding a scalpel. Well, underneath the dock, there's actually a gnome with a camera. What's a gnome doing with a camera? I don't know. But it is weird that right above him, there is a skeleton holding a scalpel as if he was trying to attack something or kill something. I bet this guy's life quite literally flashed before his eyes. Now, if we head north of this location, we will find our next gnome. Near this house, on a small road or pathway, we can find a small bush with a flamingo and a gnome next to it. Now, again, this is one of the rare naughty gnomes that isn't naughty at all. It's just standing here being a garden gnome. Carry on, Mr. Gnome. Now, we'll want to head back to the Harbour Grand Hotel. Next to the pool, there is a small circular garden which is now filled with huge spikes. Vlad would be proud. At the base of these spikes, there's a gnome. Seems to be up to just good old gnomish deeds standing in the garden. Well, at the feet of this gnome, there is a skull, of course, implying that this gnome somehow killed a person and is now standing over its skull like a trophy. Just when you thought gnomes weren't that bad, they're starting to get worse again. Now if we head north from here, or to the south of Old Pond House, this is actually one of my favourite gnome encounters. Underneath this huge tree, we will find some shrubs and some actually pretty interesting stuff. There is a gravestone with some lit candles, 
and the grave seems to have been dug up, excavated. I'll give you one guess who did it. So there's three blue gnomes standing up next to the gravestone with books and candles surrounding them and also a shovel next to them. Then in the grave, there's a skeleton who is holding, grasping this red guard gnome. So it appears that this grave was already here. Then what happened? This red gnome passed away somehow. I suppose it passed its expiry date or something like this. Then these three gnomes dug up the grave to bury their friend the red gnome. Of course this skeleton was already in here. So they put the gnome in its arms and now they're just staring at his corpse in an open grave as your best friends should do. So if mine are listening to this I expect you to do this for me. Anyway, a kind of cool one. I mean, digging up a grave isn't exactly a good deed, but it's kind of sad. Their gnome friend passed away and they buried him. I could only wonder what he died of. Some terrible disease. Some kind of terrible, crippling, sinned gnome. <laughs> oh man, that's bad. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, which can be found to the east of Zephyr Ridge Camp. Here in the swampy shallows, amongst the reeds, underneath a small bank we can find the next gnome. Here we can find a skeleton mostly buried in the mud, holding a book surrounded by two Nuka-Cola bottles and with a Nuka-Cola cherry bottle shoved into its mouth. And of course there is a gnome lying on the ground here in a kind of weird position. Now I don't really know what this is meant to be, but from some angles it looks like the skeleton is popping the gnome's cherry, if you know what I'm talking about. Some R-rated angles here. So let's leave these two to their fun, and as we do escape this scene, the skyline is appropriately cherry colored. Ah yes, now we'll be heading south of the ruined radio tower. Here we can find one of my favorite gnomish encounters. There are a large number of radioactive mushrooms sprouting from the sickened soil around this scene. There is some kind of cow skull, a skeleton with no head grasping at a book. There is a box with a gnome atop it who is wearing a skull mask. There's lit candles, there's also a bloody handprint on the box on which he stands. There is also a bloody handprint on the box next to him. I don't know about you guys, but this gnome reminds me of that guy from Game of Thrones. The wildling that wore the skull mask and had the staff. I do believe his name was the Lord of Bones. So not too sure what's meant to be going on here. I think the fact that this guy doesn't have other gnomes around him worshipping him almost makes it more creepy because he's just gone solo like he's so powerful and so evil he can just roam around Far Harbor safely by himself. Really creepy gnome, really cool though, I really like this guy and he fits perfectly into the fitting of Far Harbor and the island. Anyway let's get on to the next gnome. Ah uh, yes, this can be found to the northwest of the Glowing Grove. And this gnome is just a standard garden gnome, standing outside the front door of this yellow, ruined house. Not up to any mischief, just standing here waiting for a garden to pop up so he can do his job. Ah, uh, this next guy can be found in the water found to the north of the Nucleus, the headquarters of the Children of Adam. Here in the water there is a boat sticking out. Well, at least the top of a boat anyway. And at the top of the top of this boat, there is a gnome standing in front of the spotlight. He's just chilling, perhaps he's the one who was driving the boat when it sunk, made his way to the top to make sure he didn't drown. To be honest, who knows what he's up to? Maybe he's the one that sunk the boat intentionally and killed all the people aboard. Wouldn't surprise me gnoming these gnomes. Now this next Michelin star gnome can be found to the east of Dalton Farm on the northern end of the island. Here we'll find these public toilets next to the water and inside the female toilets, that's where we can find our fellow. In the cubicle at the end, there's some flowers growing out of the ground, there's a toilet, and next to the toilet is a gnome holding a wooden spoon. Standard toilet procedure. Upon a closer inspection, we can see that inside the toilet, there's bits of fish and some vegetables, which would point towards that this gnome is cooking something up. And it looks like he's following one of my recipes. Toilet water plus other random ingredients. I'm not too sure what this meal's called, but I can guarantee that this guy is cooking up trouble. Forget gastronomy. I think you'll find it's pronounced gastronome. Now from here, if we head to the east or off the northeastern shore of the island found in Far Harbor, 
we can find our next set of gnomes. Now out here, there's two fishing nets and some boats stacked up. Next to the fishing nets, there's also some little docks or things for people to stand on, some pontoons, whatever you want to call them. However, of course, standing on them are not people, but instead three garter gnomes. A blue one, a red one, and a destroyed one. As always, at first glance, it would appear that these gnomes are just standing here fishing. But of course, if we look down into the water in the fishing nets, are not fish, but instead the skeletons of three humans. Not only that, but this one has a hacksaw jammed into its ribs and its head cut off. This one has a combat knife stuck into its back and its head cut off. And this one has a wrench around its neck and is missing its head. I can only assume that like a married man, he underwent too much talk and his head exploded. But goddamn, this is gruesome. I mean, even this fish is shocked. These bloody gnomes up to no good. But where are the heads of these skeletons? Well, back on the docks next to the gnomes, we can find two skulls, one of which is just sitting there next to a lantern. The other is sitting there next to a lantern. However, it's got some more interesting aspects to it. As we can see, the top of the skull is actually missing. And on the ground behind it, there is a hammer with skull fragments all around it. Of course, highlighting that the gnomes used this hammer to crack open the skulls of the humans. What they did with the contents, I don't know. Perhaps they ate them? I mean, are we really at the point where gnomes are eating the brains of humans? That's pretty crazy stuff. Anyway, some pretty crazy stuff. These gnomes are pretty scary, so we're gonna leave them to their naughty activities. This next guy can be found to the southeast of the Older Sea Day Spa. Here, we'll find a house, and out the back of this house, there's a little porch or decked area for you to chill out in. If we look a little bit closer though, we'll find something actually quite reassuring. There is a crabber's pot, which is designed to catch crabs, lobsters, things like this, and inside it, there's a gnome. Take that, you little bastard. Snooping around in people's crab pots, and what happens? You get caught, you little piece of garbage. It's good to get some revenge on those bloody garden gnomes. Anyway, we'll leave him to it to suffer eternally trapped in wood and wire. Now, to the northwest of the Alder Sea Day Spa. We'll see this road here and up ahead there's some burning tires, but before we get to the burning tires, which we're actually never going to get to, because the thing of interest is before them in this little crater here, we can see a pipe sticking out of the ground. Inside the pipe, there's actually a gnome with a little uh, Halloween themed jack-o'-lantern candy carrying basket thing. And next to this, there's also a sign that says, CAUTION FALLING ROCKS. CAUTION has been overwritten with welcome. Welcome falling rocks. Wouldn't want to be lithophobic, always welcome the falling rocks. Anyway, so in here, there's a little gnome hiding with his little candy basket, inside of which is a little box of candy. Ain't that quaint? Happy Halloween, everyone, an island full of murderous gnomes. Ha ha ha, how jolly. Anywho, let's leave this gnome where he belongs in the sewer. Now, to the south of the Radiant Crest Shrine, we can find our next bubbly gnome. Here, underneath an umbrella next to some boxes and a wooden pallet, we can find a bathtub with a pre-war soldier in it, and also a gnome. Next to this bathtub, there's also an ammunition box, a lantern, and three bottles of alcohol. And I gotta say, this couple certainly washed away any expectations I had. A soldier and his friend together, as he got hit by a nuclear blast and died. I don't know if it's love, I don't know if it's friendship, I don't know if this gnome actually killed the guy. We just don't know. Now, just to the northwest of the Vim Pop Factory, we can find this weird little arm of land sticking out into the water with this big bluff, a tree, and a kind of hedge sheltering it. Well, here, there's something weird. This is definitely one of the weirder naughty gnome encounters that we'll find. Weird in the sense that I have no idea what happened. So there seems to be a grave, maybe, or a crater that was created by a very powerful impact. In this crater, there is a pram with a gnome in it. Underneath the pram, seemingly crushed, is a skeleton of a human, of course. There's also a lead pipe that the skeleton seems to be reaching for. There's a plate in front of the skeleton, and next to the pram and the skeleton, there's also a little portrait of a kitten. So let me run through that again, because it's really hard to put these puzzle pieces together. There's a pram with a gnome in it, the gnome is holding a Molotov cocktail, or at least there's one next to him in the pram. He's sitting on a comfy pillow. Now all that is on top of a skeleton, which seems to be crushed, who also seems to be reaching for a lead pipe with a plate and a picture of a kitten next to it, 
all of which is inside this grave or this huge crater. As if this person was crushed by the pram as it flew out of the sky. I don't know. I really don't know what happened here, but if you know what happened, of course, be sure to comment down below. Now, these next two can be found at the Children of Atom Shrine. Firstly, if we go out the back, there's this kind of like toxic sludge puddle. Of course, this is being created by the water waste spewing out of this pipe filled with toxic barrels, leaking toxic waste all over the place. In this water, right near where the drain pipe comes out, there's a gnome lying in it. Maybe this is how the gnomes became active. They became super radioactive. Some kind of weird ceramic coming to life, haunted goosebumps story thing. I don't know what happened, but this guy seems to be soaking it up like it's good for him. And if we come a little bit back from the Children of Adam Shrine, in the bushes right next to it, we can find another gnome. This one's a little weird too. It's really hard to see, but there's actually a gnome lying in a tiny gnome-sized grave with a crucifix above it and there's a teacup on top of that little crucifix and there's a teapot next to the grave. There's also some little green radioactive mushrooms growing around the gravesite. What happened to the gnome? How it died? I don't know. Who buried it? Mm, who knows? But I think we can agree, a gnome buried just means one less to worry about. Ah yes, now these next two gnomes you've probably never seen because they're actually very, very far beyond the invisible wall of Far Harbor. You need to change lines in the INI files and also use console commands to get to these locations. Both of which can be found way to the northwest off of the DLC. So the first one can be found outside this house, doing its job standing guard, near the garden at least, standing around plotting how he's going to build his new Noman Empire. At least that's what I think he's thinking. At the moment he's just chilling, up to nothing bad at all. And the next one again found super far beyond the boundaries of Far Harbor. On this island that you cannot access, we will see a bunch of beach chairs, or sun chairs as you may call them, some umbrellas down on the shoreline, and standing on one of them is a gnome. Uh, looks like he didn't put sunblock on because he is char grilled and it also seems like he's been here a while as the food in front of him seems to have gone off. But I mean as long as the gnome's happy that's all that matters. He's standing here enjoying the sun looking out over the water and just because there's so much cool stuff beyond the boundaries of Far Harbor I am actually going to make a video in which we explore beyond the boundaries of Far Harbor. But for now let's finish off our naughty gnomes list. Found to the west of Eden Meadows Cinema here we can find a small pond well it's actually a pretty big pond really as far as ponds go it's quite colossal. Anyway underneath this umbrella there is a lantern, there's a little lunchbox, a bucket with some fish in it, some other bits and bobs, but more importantly, there's a gnome with a fishing rod, which has been cast out into the pond to catch one of the fresh radioactive fallout fish. Now you may have noticed that standing behind the gnome fishing in the bushes, there's a red garden gnome. Of course, looking slick as ever with his sunnies on. Now this guy's actually a psychopath because next to him, there's a human skeleton with a knife stabbed in its back. It would appear that this person was holding a camera taking pictures of the lovely lake. As they were doing so, straight in the back, a knife to the spine from this Keemstar looking garden ornament. The phrase kill a Keemstar is quite literal in this scenario. But I gotta say, this guy fishing looks like he's had some success as his bucket is jam packed full of fish. Well done indeed, quite the angler. And I hope like the fish, I've still got you hooked because there's only a few more to go. Now found to the northeast of Briony's Bait and Tackle, we can find a camp of trappers. Now down the hill from the camp, there's actually an outhouse, which is where you do your business when you don't have a toilet available. And you'll never believe what we'll find inside. Probably the most off-putting thing possible if you were taking a dump. Two gnomes standing in the corner, staring at you the back of your head while you do a poo. Um, pretty creepy to be honest. It could even be more lewd than that. Perhaps they're in here having some uh, alone time. I don't know. I don't want to make any judgments. We just got a red dude and a blue dude chilling in the toilet together. Where else? My friends and I always hang out in the toilet. Matt, what are you up to, mate? Yeah, I'll see you in the cubicle, son. Yay! Happens every Friday. Anyway, speaking of trapper camps, found to the north of Briony's Bait and Tackle, we can find another trapper's camp. Now, over against one of the trees, we have like a uh, makeshift tent made out of a blue tarp. Inside this blue tent tarp, 
we can find a blue gnome. Again, not something you want watching over you while you sleep, as it is right next to the ammunition box and the bed. Interestingly, there is also some oil and some glue in the box. I don't know what that's doing in a bedroom, but okay. Each to their own. Now, something unique about this gnome is that in his hand, he's actually holding a golden pocket watch. The purpose of this, I don't know. Although, again, it is a unique feature of this gnome, so it should definitely be pointed out. And although we don't know what its purpose is, I guarantee it's something weird and I'm gonna leave that gnome in the tent to watch over whoever sleeps there. And ultimately we have our last trio of gnomes, of definitely naughty gnomes. Now this can be found to the southwest of Eagle Cove Tannery. Here there is a destroyed house. The remains, the ruins of a once, I can only assume, normal building that seems to have been burnt down as the area it's on and the kind of area around it has a very distinct charcoal charred ashy look that the rest of the area does not have. So again, it appears that this building was burnt down. Inside, we can find many remains of humans. And along with these human remains, you guessed it, we can find a whole bunch of garden gnomes. Now this guy here, the skeleton seems to be grasping the gnome. Perhaps he loved it. Perhaps he spear tackled it to the ground to destroy it. Something I'll be doing from now on when I see a garden gnome. Now there's also some flammable liquids near this skeleton, so maybe this gnome burnt the house down? Wouldn't surprise me. But let's not stop here, there's more gnomes to be seen. In the middle of the house, there is a skeleton and a gnome, both of which have these radioactive green mushrooms growing out of them. This skeleton, however, has a knife or a scalpel stuck into its rib cage, straight to the heart. Next to him, of course, is the gnome who also seems to have taken some fire damage with char marks on it. Weirdly though, this skeleton also seems to be grasping the gnome. Was it hugging it? Was it picking it up to throw it on the ground? I don't know. Also, in the other hand of this skeleton, he's holding some wonder glue. Maybe the gnome was broken and he was gluing it back together. A confusing set of circumstances. And there is one more, a red gnome. A red gnome that seems to be unscathed from the house fire. Now this guy is holding a hacksaw and he seems to have used this rock as a little platform to cut this dude's head off. As we can see, there's a human skeleton which has had the skull removed and the skeleton's neck is exactly where the tip of the saw is. Of course, it's pretty obvious the gnome saw this guy's head off. Or gal, who knows. Interesting, in one of the hands of this skeleton, there is a, a locket. One of those things where you keep a picture of a loved one on a necklace. So when times are hard, like when you're about to have your head sawed off, you can open it up and look at them for one last time. Very sad, I suppose. This gnome is definitely a psychopath and deserves to receive gnome justice. From now on, I want you all to promise me to destroy every gnome you find. As we've seen, most of the gnomes are naughty gnomes and those that aren't, I'm sure will be soon enough. So I hope you have enjoyed the journey, the discovery and the subtle new fear of garden gnomes that has been uncovered through this video, with the staggering total of 60 naughty gnomes found in Far Harbor. Be sure to let myself and others know what your theories and conclusions are on what's up with these gnomes in Far Harbor. Is it just a little bit of trickery and fun by the developers, some easter eggs, some little references, or is there a darker and more canon explanation for these gnomes? Perhaps the fog of Far Harbor has breathed life into them. Perhaps they've somehow sprung to life after being exposed to extreme radiation. Well, probably not, because most of the darker gnome scenarios seem to be pre-war. So if you have any information, facts, evidence, speculation, theories, or anything to do with these garden gnomes, let myself and others know down in the comments below. If you have any ideas for something that should be covered in the Fallout Detective series, be sure to let me know. I'll look into whatever strange and wonderful topics you present. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a kindness and leave a like, it makes the video look good. Leave a comment with your Fallout Detective ideas and your theories on the naughty gnomes of Far Harbor. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos similar to this one, please subscribe. It helps me know that people enjoy these kind of videos and in the long run will result in more of them. Be sure to click on the little bell icon next to the subscribe button right here on YouTube, so you are notified when a new Fallout Detective video is uploaded. Other Fallout Detective video links can be found in the description. Now down there in the old description,
description, you can also find links to my social medias, including Twitter and Patreon. Be sure to hit them up if you would like to support the channel, and be sure to follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with what I'm up to. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into these videos that I create for you, so your support is most welcomed and greatly appreciated in any and all forms. Feel free to check out the playlist on screen. Thanks for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I'll see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.